Okay, uh, so in this lab, we will try to view uh, the GPS point, so which is a most uh, a one type of a very common spatial data set. And we're trying to uh, import the GPS point into ArcGIS Pro. And also we will view those GPS points. Uh, so there are different types of the products that provide those um, like something like GPS data. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to use this one, GPX file, uh, which was collected by using uh, OSM and app. So if you're interested, you can install OSM and on your cell phone, and you can track your the activities of yourself. And um, there is a video tutorial uh, on my YouTube channel so that you can check that one and you can follow that to collect some GPS data of yourself. Uh, so before I open that one in ArcGIS Pro, so let's just look at the, the data itself uh, by using a notepad. Okay, uh, so we can see that the, the, the data set is organized uh, following the XML uh, format. We can see that the GPX, uh, uh, indeed I'm, I use the OSM app. So if you're interested, you can uh, download that app and also you can collect some data. Uh, we have the metadata, so that is the, the date that when I collected those sample points and then we have the track okay so if you close that track you can see there's there is only one track in this uh, gpx file and within that one track that act there's actually one segment okay so because i just take i just took one segment when i collected that gps point so i just had one trick right one trip and so that's why, why I have one track and also there's only one segment. And in that one segment, you can see there, have, I have, there are multiple points. Okay, so you can see that is the first point. And, and this is the second point, which has an extension. And then that has a third, uh, a third point. Okay, uh, so for the first point, you can see we have the latitude and the longitude okay so those are in decimals so that i believe was used in the wgs 1984 uh, gcs and we have the elevation okay so gps data does contain the elevation information and we have the time date and time that uh, when i collected that single point um, and also remember that there that that also is in the UTC time zone. So um, that is in the UTC time zone. So may not be your local time zone. And also we have the HDOP. So that is a parameter that indicates the accuracy of the horizontal accuracy. So generally, the lower the better. Okay. So that is the sec the first point. And the second point has a similar uh, data structure. Well, of course, that is in, in a different location uh, and also at a different time. And however, it has one more extension that is called speed. OK, uh, so that is a spontaneous speed um, that uh, at that single point, because that is second point. Uh, so uh, GPS is able to calculate the speed. And that is a speed that is a, a meter per second, I believe. Okay, and that is second point. And then the third point, and the fourth point, and the fifth point, and there are a lot of points. Okay, so basically, you can see the structure is that we have one track that contains multiple segments, and one segment can contains multiple points. Okay, so that is a similar structure that we mentioned for vector data. So vector data, there are three types of the features, point, lines, and also polygons. Okay, polygons are set of the closed points. Polylines are set of the a list of points. And a point contains X and Y coordinates. All right, uh, so let's close that one. So 
And next, we are going to view that one on, on by using ArcGIS Pro. So because this class is online, so we're using the uh, uh, app stream that on AWS. Uh, so it so if you want import the data to ArcGIS Pro, which is on app stream that is not local. So there are two ways. You can either upload this one to your OneDrive folder, and then you can open your OneDrive folder uh, in uh, AppStream, and then you can act, you you can open um, ArcGIS Pro, and also to load data from your OneDrive folder. Or you can go to AppStream, and you can upload your data directly to AppStream. So let's do the second one. So here on AppStream, um, I can open the folder. And so you can upload the folder that as long as you know where you can find the data. So for example, I, I always save the data in OneDrive folder as well. So, uh, so I go to OneDrive folder and I find out the folder of this class. And I create a new folder and I call it Lab3. OK. And in this three, lab three, I can see I can upload the files. Okay, I can upload the files. Another way is that you can just create the uh, the folder and also upload the files in OneDrive directly. So if you prefer that way, that's that's also fine. But here, let's say I upload the file. Uh, that is in my week four. Okay, so that is my GPS points. So right now it is GPX. Okay, it is GPX data format that following the XML uh, data structure, and that is now up uploaded in my lab three. And then I close that, and now I'm going to open the ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so with the GMU uh, URL, and I type my GMU ID and the password. Okay, so you can see ArcGIS Pro now has started, and again you can see that your previous labs are here. Uh, let's create a new map. Um, let's create a new project by using the map template, and let's locate to the OneDrive folder. So I'm going to call this one Lab Three, so that for the that is a GPS lab. Uh, again, there's one count. There's a concept tutorial on my YouTube channel, so if you want to follow that one, so that will be um, shorter, and this one it it will be slower, but that will tell it will show more detail. Okay. Uh, so let's find out the OneDrive folder. So in my case, I I do have the D uh, drive, so I click D drive, photon user, and also I think that is in my files. OneDrive, and files, and Lab3. OK. Uh, because my GPS data is also in this folder, so um, we are going to create a new folder that in the, uh, we are not going to create a new folder. So I'm going to uncheck this one. Okay, so that means this folder will be the home folder. So instead of creating new folder inside inside that folder, so I'm going to use this folder as my home folder for this project. That is also is a folder that we just created and also uploaded the GPS points. And say OK. Okay, uh, so now we still have this. Um, uh, base map, so there are no thing, there are no points. But if if we go to our home folder, and uh, lab three, uh, also also it is not recognized here because GPX by default cannot be recognized uh, in ArcGIS Pro. So what we're going to do next is that we're going to run our first tool, spatial analysis tool, uh, in ArcGIS Pro. Okay, so uh, if you go to the analysis, okay, and if you click the toolbox, and that will bring this 
geoprocessing window. Okay, so that contains a lot of the uh, ArcGIS Pro tool that uh, support your analysis. And I think there there might be hundreds of tools there. Uh, I don't think there's a, a there's a person that understand how to use all the tools so because there are a huge amount of tools. Uh, so the most the best way I use is I just search the tool that I want to use. So if you type GPX, okay, and you will find out, okay, so that the first tool I want to use. I want to convert that GPX into a features. So features are the spatial data that, uh, the vector spatial data that ArcGIS Pro can recognize. Okay, so let's click that tool. So now I just bring this GPX to features tools up. Um, okay, the first one is ask. So it required two inputs. The first one is asking that where is the import GPX file. So you can click this folder, and here you can see in the lab three folder it is located here. So that's in the lab three folder. Okay, so that is also in your project folder. So if you open your project folder, that you can see lab three. Uh, if for some reason you cannot find out the data and you can also go to the C driver or D driver and go to your OneDrive or go to a folder that you uploaded where you uploaded your GPX data. Okay, so let's click that one. And next, you need to define where do you want to save your data, okay? Uh, so by default, so they will give you a name, and that will be saved in your uh, Lab3 folder, Lab3 project. So uh, let's say, let's just leave the default one. So let's do now change that one. And sometimes you can also change site the environments, but for this tool, so it looks like there's no environments that we can change okay so again so we need to find out a gpx tool so that is in the toolbox uh, and the, the analysis and you search gpx and you will find out the gpx to features tool and you bring that one uh, up and in the input folder you find out the gpx file that you uploaded and for the output folder so we just use the default name and also default location and then let's run it okay so now you can see uh, uh, it may take um, a few seconds uh, to finish this okay I said it may take a few seconds and actually it took uh, two or three minutes so yeah because it uh, ArcGIS Pro is online, and uh, so sometimes it will be slower. And one nice thing is that you can see uh, I, I didn't do anything. So once uh, GPX has been converted into the feature class, um, so it will be added to our map automatically. And also we will also be zoomed to the, to the extent of this feature automatically. Uh, so you can see that this, those are the GPX points that I took. So actually, I just walked around our uh, building. OK, so I just walked around our building. Um, let's first, let's look at, so let's first, let's see where the data is saved. So if you go to the catalog, uh, if you remember that this is the, the database um, of our lab string, so ArcGIS Pro will create uh, a new geospatial database for each single project. And by default, that geo database is a place where uh, all the results are saved. So if I run the I run the GPX to feature analysis, so the result now is saved in my database, in this spatial database. Okay, so that's the new feature which Arc ArcGIS Pro can recognize. And next, let's look at the spatial feature. So we can now see the locations. And if we open the attribute table, OK, so those are the uh, uh, 
non-spatial feature. So you can see the date time. Okay, remember that in the XML file, so we do have those information. So when the uh, when the point was taken, and also we have the elevation. Okay, elevation information. Uh, we also have the date time. So I believe that is a new field that created added by the ArcGIS Pro. All right, and now you can see I have 105 points. Okay, so so those are uh, 100 and also five points. Uh, next, let's look at uh, the properties. Okay, so if we go to properties, and actually I want to check the coordination system. So if we go to the source, um, spatial reference, okay. Uh, you can see that for this one, we are still using the GCS, so that is a WGS1984, okay, uh, which is which is fine. So that is GCS and WGS1984. Um, actually, you are also see that uh, for this one, we also have the vertical co coordinate system because remember there is also elevation in this GPS data, so we are also using a vertical coordination system. Okay, uh, so now we know that this data only has uh, GCS, so that it does not have the uh, PCS. So I think as we mentioned during the lecture that uh, we sh if we don't have the GCS, then we should, def we, if we don't have the PCS, then we can, we can project a PCS by using the project tool. So let's do that for this data set. So this data has that set, data set only has GCS. Uh, so let's go to analysis and let's click the toolbox one more time. And the the tool is called project. Okay, uh, so that first one. Okay, uh, so project will calculate the pieces or a new pieces for data set. Uh, based on the existing GCS. Okay, uh, so let's see the input data. So if you put a drop down list, you can see the data is already here because it is now loaded to our map. Uh, if you cannot find the data in the drop down list, you can click this uh, browser and go to your lab three and you can find out your data. Okay. And the output feature. So output feature, so they give you, a, <laughs> by default, they gave you the output feature, but, but that is fine. Um, so you can use uh, the default output feature name and also location. That That's totally fine. And next, you're going to choose the output coordination system. Um, so you can use uh, the same coordination system from uh, your existing um, data set. So right now we don't have any exi the existing data set that contains the the appropriate one um, output coordination system. Uh, so let's click this globe icon. So we are going to manually select a coordination system. Uh, so here you can see that we are going to choose a PCS. And and when you click the PCS, you can see there are a lot of type of PCS. Uh, the two systems that we introduced in the class one is called state plan. So that only works for the data that in United States. Or you can choose the UTM. Okay, so UTM for the entire world. Uh, so for this one, let's choose the state plan. And so there are also some different type of state plan system. So um, Let's just choose uh, this one, 1983 meters. And now you can see each single state may have multiple state plan system. Uh, so let's find out Virginia. Okay, so the reason that we want to choose Virginia is because the points that we're collecting now is in Virginia and especially that is in the Virginia uh, north part, not in the south part, OK? 
Okay, so we choose Virginia North. So by choose the right um, uh, state plan system, I'll choose the right PCS, so the distortion will be minimized. And also you can add this one to your favorite. So if you if you are going to do a lot of work in Virginia. And next, let's click OK. OK, and let's write. OK, uh, so after about uh, one minute, so now we can see that now we have two feature classes. So if you uncheck the second one, so the first one now is the projected one. So if we go to catalog, and we can see that now we have two results, uh, two feature classes that in our uh, geospatial database. Uh, so the first one is the original one that we converted to the from the JPX directly, and the second one is a projected one. So if we now look at the projected one by checking the uh, the properties and also the spatial reference. So now we can see we uh, we do now have the PCS, which is using the state plan Virginia North. Um, okay, and also it also has the GCS. Okay, uh, so let's remove the projected one. So because we just need one uh, for the remaining lab, so I'm going to remove the projected one. And I'm going to check the original one that we imported from the uh, GPX data. OK, uh, so if you go to map and you can explore the data. So here you can see uh, for the mouse. So if you have three buttons, the left button can view. The middle button can zoom in, zoom out. And also the right button can also do some other zoom continues. OK, so now if I use my middle button and I can zoom in and zoom out okay and if I using the right button I can click right button and I can zoom in or zoom out continuously and if I click my left button and I can identify those points okay so you can see the object ID type the data etc so for for those of you who do not have uh, a mouse like this, so what we can do is that we can go to the view and we have this navigator. Okay. Uh, in this navigator, so if you click this tiny arrow, so we want to show the full control. Okay, so just in case you do not have the mouse like what I just showed there, so now you can have. You can just control the map by click on this for control navigator. So for example, if you click plus, you can zoom in. Uh, you can click minus, you can zoom out. And also you can drag this circle so that you, you can rotate the map. OK. OK, so that is how you can explore the map. Um, OK, uh, next. So remember that there, the, those GPS points also contain the time, date and time information. So in ArcGIS Pro, um, there's one nice function that you can see those points uh, in different time period. So that you can, you can see like something like a video that you can show them, see the movements of those objects. So if they are temporal information or if there are date and time information there. So let's see that one. So that's that's a pretty cool function. So let's right click this layer. And when again we go to properties. And you can see there's an option called time. OK. And by default, we didn't enable the time. But however, so since we do have the date time field, so we say, OK, so each we want we are going to enable the time on this layer. So we say each feature has a single time field. That is uh, the that is the case in our data. 
And next, you need cal you need to tell okay, so which field contains the time date. Uh, so by default, they are using the date time, so they are using the best guess, uh, which is right. So let's just use the date time. Okay, and you can also calculate the, the the time range. And if you know the time zones, you can define the time zones. Uh, so, but right now, let's just use the default one. Okay, uh, so once the time is enabled, you will see the, the bar like this. That is the time bar. And also you can see the option the time window is now active. So you can you can you can define the starter and also end time and also you can define the span of the time intervals. Uh, so right now let's just use everything as default. And let's let's from the beginning. Let's just click the start. And you can see that I was walking through the, around the building. OK, so there are some errors. Remember that the GPS points have some accuracies. The accuracy is between 3 to 5 meters. So if you see that uh, the points that overlap with the, the footprint of building, it doesn't mean that I <laughs> I was flying over the building. It just means that there are some errors. Okay, especially that if you if you are walking um, close to some high object like buildings, so the objects those buildings may block the signals, so you may have errors. Okay, so let's say it one more time. You can say I get out of the building and I just walk. Uh, so those are the errors around the building and and then I uh, go back to the the front door of the building okay so now you can see you can only see the point at different times uh, interval so if you want to see the entire all the points you can just simply uncheck the time and so now you can see we can see all the points. OK, so that is we can view the points with the navigation and also we can view the points when we can enable the time and everything is done in a 2D view. So we can also convert that one into a 3D view because remember that the those points also contains the elevation. So let's uh, go to view and let's convert this 2D view into the 3D view. So you can see we can convert into a global scene and also we can convert into a local scene. Uh, so because right now we are looking at a point that's around a single building, so it's definitely at a local scene. OK, uh, so now we are in a 3D view. Uh, so for some reason, I was <laughs> automatically set to this uh, scale that I cannot see any points. So actually, if you go back to if you um, expand this phone control and if you zoom out a little bit I still prefer use the middle button of my mouse but just in case you don't have that one that mouse okay looks like if I hold this minus you can zoom out continuously okay so now you can see those points and so now we are in a 3d view so you can see that the globe look like slightly different. So actually, if you click the globe, and uh, you can change the view in 3D. OK. So let me convert that. And I want to move down a little bit, so I want to see my points. OK, so that's too much. And let me zoom out a little bit. Well, uh, you can see that now we are in this 3D view. So, uh, so we cannot see those points. So if we uncheck. Uh, those maps 
So now you can see those points. Okay. Uh, so believe it or not, there we can we do see the a slight difference in terms of the elevations. Uh, so if I put the uh, base map back. Okay, and also I need to enable this one. Okay, uh, so hopefully you, you, you do have the sense that, okay, so you can see those those 3D view. Um, well, we cannot see the difference a lot because uh, it's around those buildings, but we do see that there's a slight difference in terms of the elevation. Okay, so that is for this lab. So we can check those uh, GPS. So we import uh, the GPX points into ArcGIS Pro by using GPX to features so that we uh, we convert the data into the format that ArcGIS map can recognize. We also projected the data so that we, div we give it a new PCS based on the GCS. Um, and then we can view the data in 2D dimension uh, if you don't have the mouse, like if your mouse does not have the middle button, so you can enable this on-screen navigator, uh, so that allow you to zoom in and also zoom out and also rotate the map. We also enabled the time dimension so that you can see the movements of those points, and then we convert the 2D map into a 3D map, and you can see that the the on-screen navigator also change a little bit so that can allow you to navigate in this 3d dimension and we can see that we do see the the, the difference in terms of elevation of those gps points <laughs>